What's up, guys? Mason the Brock Anderson here, and I don't even know what to say anymore. <laughs> I really don't. I mean, going into this, I I look at the lineup, and I'm thinking, this is embarrassing. This is pathetic. I mean, you've gone with the exact same lineup that just dropped two points against 10-man Burnley. No changes. You've gone with Batty Shield in the back again. You've got Silva. Chalaba's back from injury. You don't have to play Batty Shield, and you still did. You've still got Caicedo in the midfield. Why? At what point do we finally just say, you know what, Gallagher does a better job of cleaning up in the midfield than Caicedo does. And he's better on the ball than Caicedo is, so we don't have to worry about any bad mistakes. But you've gone with those two again. So all I'm thinking is, well, this could be trouble. But then we come out, 2 nothing up. And I'm thinking, okay, well, man, you didn't come to play today. Cool, maybe we'll actually have some joy. But then all of a sudden... Kaiseido has to Kaiseido. I mean, it, it happens so often. He just gives the ball away so cheaply. He gives the ball away more than Jorginho ever did. Like, I'm, I feel bad for how much I hated on Jorginho because, my God, it can get worse, apparently. But he has to be an idiot, give the ball away, and then Betty Shield can't make up the ground all of a sudden 2 1. And I'm thinking, well, I, we've seen this story before. How many times have we been in complete control of a match? And then we make a mistake, give the ball away, and now all of a sudden, we don't know how to play anymore. And sure enough, what was it, three, four minutes later? Another goal. Batty Ashil, absolutely no clue what's behind him. Easy header Fernandez for the back post. Terrible. Terrible defending. You're two people that before the game, I'm thinking, why the hell are they out there? Again, I said this whenever Potter was in charge. I even said this at some games whenever Tuchel was in charge. If I can look at these matches, if I can look at the team sheet before a match and call out who the problem players are going to be, why can the manager not? This supposed brilliant manager who's managed at the top level, who should know his stuff, how can he look at this team sheet and go, yes, we're going to get a win out of this game with this exact same team that couldn't beat a 10-man relegation side? We're going to win this match. How can you say that? And then sure enough, the two guys that are easily two of the worst players we've seen at this club in a while. I mean, granted, there are a lot of bad players at the club now since Bully came in, but I mean, these two are bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Terrible players. And yet they keep playing. We've got other options we can use and we keep using them. And then they give away two goals. And from that point on, it just kind of felt like back and forth. You know, Man U, they had the momentum. They had the confidence to come at us. So now they're getting chances. We're creating a few here and there because their defense is just as bad as ours is. And it's just, it's a matter of who can get that goal. And then what do you know? Another mistake in the back. <laughs> Another mistake. You've got Anthony coming down the line. Batty Shield goes, hey, I can get there first. And then is now completely far out of position. Caicedo can't keep up with Anthony. And then we let him get his first assist of the season. No other team has given up an assist or a goal to Anthony in the Premier League this season. We are the first ones to do it. We are, we are the team. I want to find out how many players get their first goal or first assist in the Premier League against Chelsea. Because I feel like I hear it almost every single week of, oh, you got his first goal. Oh, he scored his first goal. Anthony hasn't done a thing all season. The only thing he's done is in the FA Cup. We gave him an assist today. I mean, how much more proof do you need? <sighs> but then Dallow has to go and make sure that Pochettino stays in the job for a few more weeks and then gives away a sloppy penalty. And all of a sudden it's okay. Well, you know, terrible game, terrible performance, but somehow managed to draw. I'm still frustrated. And then Palmer has to go and put on his magic boots and go score one at the death. <laughs> And now I don't know what to feel anymore. <laughs> because obviously, I mean, it's one of those feelings where I was almost stunned watching it. You know, it's, as a fan, you've got that joy inside of getting the win. But there was something stunning about this. As, as bad as we were, as far gone from this game as we were, to somehow pluck a win from the jaws of death. I mean, it speaks really to what a player Cole Palmer is. He has been, out of all of this shit that Bowley has brought in since he's taken over the club, Palmer is the diamond. He is that one 
player that they got right. He wanted out of Man City. He wanted a chance to prove himself. We gave him that opportunity, and he has proven himself. Everybody else, almost everybody else has failed. You know, the whole bully experiment has almost completely failed. Palmer is the one thing that, in my opinion, has kept this from being a relegation side. And that would be the ultimate failure for Bully. So, but I mean, I can't overlook though Pochettino's failures. I can't overlook your your starting Buddy Shield, your starting Caicedo. You take off De Sassi over Buddy Shield. Not that De Sassi was great today, but between the two, Buddy Shield mistakes three goals. De Sassi mistakes, maybe I could fault him for one of them. But you take De Sassi off over Buddy Shield. Makes no sense. There's no reason Buddy Shield should ever play for us again. Honestly, after some of the mistakes he made earlier this season, he never should be playing again. But he's still out here, he's still playing, and he's still making mistakes that lead to goals. And yet Pochettino continues to pick him. That is a, a problem. And then on top of that, <laughs> you look at some of the subs he's bringing, you know, you're just throwing out, ah, let's just throw out Sterling, see what he can do. Ah, let's just throw out Mariueke. Yeah, he gets a penalty, but he's not. The, these are not the guys that are going to change the game for you. Sterling possibly can, but in the run he's been, in the form he's been recently, he's not going to get the job done for you. And granted, I mean, you don't have much else, but it just sort of feels like we're, hey, let's throw, throw this out here, let's see if it works. And today, it just so happened that some of it did work. It just so happened that, yeah, Mariueke did pop up with a great run in behind and Dalo made a, a stupid mistake. But at the end of the day, I can't look at this game and go, this was a good game. It was a lucky win. After the first 25 minutes, if you told me we were going to win, I would have said absolutely. If you told me after the 70th minute or whatever it was they scored their third goal that we were going to win, I would have said absolutely not. Because <laughs> the way we were playing up to that point was pathetic. And then we just, it, it is, I will say, I, I will give credit where credit is due, the players did not give up. We did at least push ourselves over the line. We did keep pushing all the way to the end of the game. And I will give credit that some of these players are not the, I'm going to fight really hard to get the win. I'm going to fight for the badge type of players. We've not seen that from a lot of them. But some of them did show up today. Some of them did show their fight, their spirit. And I have to give credit where credit's due. So with all that being said, let's talk about now the players and kind of pick apart where things went right, where things went wrong. So Petrovic, all three of the goals, in my opinion, are savable. All three of them were, they're, they're difficult. You know, you've got a one-on-one chance, so that's hard. The second one is a free header at the back post, which is hard. And then the third one is another basically one-on-one -on -one chance, which is hard. They're all hard chances. But again, as I've said before, a world-class keeper probably saves those. The first one, world-class keeper would be coming out, would be making himself big and possibly getting a foot to it. But he, he didn't. He took too long to step out. By the time he finally did step out, Garnaccio was already in the box and was basically having two wide-open corners of the net to shoot at. For the second one, I mean, it's just a matter of you got to keep moving your feet. You know, he, he gets a cross well, but he almost goes too far. And he doesn't move his feet quickly enough to get back across to make the save. Like you can see, as soon as the header comes in, his feet are already past him. And he's not moving to get back. And then the third one is just a matter of, I mean, you've got to be out there. You've got to beat Garnacho to that ball because I mean, the defenders aren't going to get there first. So you've got to read the situation and you've got to come across and collect. Because we are all, all over the place defensively. You've got to be the intelligent one and say, he's going to go to that guy. Let me get out there first. But instead, he didn't read it. He was on his line basically until the cross came in. And at that point, it's too late. You're not going to beat Garnacho there. So, in my opinion, all three of them, I wouldn't say are his fault. But I will say again, all three of them, a world-class keeper, I think has a chance of saving all three. I think would have saved maybe two out of those three. I think the header probably would have saved. And I think the third one, he probably would have read it and won the ball first. So... I, it's it's difficult because I don't want to come down too hard on him when he's not the problem, but he's also not the solution. And I think that's kind of where I am with Petrovic at the moment. He's 
He's not Sanchez. He's not giving away chances. He's not making super obvious mistakes outside of you know Burnley's second goal. But he's not saving games for us. In the back, Gusto on the right, kind of a typical performance for him. You know, he gets down the line. He's very aggressive. Looks decent on the ball, but defensively, he's got to step up a little bit more because it feels like there are too many moments when he's caught out of position. And some of that, I think, is the style of play we are in at the moment. You know, it feels like we are getting our fullbacks down the line without a whole lot to cover defensively. And I think that's where we need another Conte type in the midfield, which everybody thinks Caicedo is for some reason. But we don't have that right now. We don't have a midfielder that can basically break up a counterattack and be that dominant force in there. So whenever our fullbacks do get down and are caught out of position on a counterattack, we have a Conte type of player in the midfield to break up that counter. So until we get that, I feel like that's always going to be my criticism on our fullbacks is that most of the time they are going to be out of position because that's just how we're playing. But I mean, Gusto of the two fullbacks is a little bit stronger at the moment. So I think he's He's definitely come a long way from where he was at the beginning of the season. And some of that is he's young, so of course he had to grow into it. But I think he's done okay. I just want to see him, I guess, be a little bit more aware of a situation in the, in the defense. DeSassi, and like I said, it's not like he had a perfect game. It's not like he was absolutely flawless today. He had a lot of mistakes as well. There were several moments where it felt like his passes or his reading of a situation, his knowledge of when to step out and when to stay back. He just doesn't have it. And I, I I've said this before as well, but he should not be one of the defenders we're relying on. We did not bring him in to be a starter. We brought him in to be backup, but our physio team sucks. So we don't have most of our starting defenders. So that's for him. It's unfortunate. And I, I do have to give credit that he's at least worked himself hard. He doesn't just give up. He does challenge for everything. But there's got to be a bit of bit more intelligence of when to challenge and when not to go in. Because sometimes those moments, he makes the wrong decision and it costs him. Eddie Scheel, I mean, a player that I wanted to see more of. And I think I've I probably talked about this in a past video as well, but... He looked like he was going to be the next Silva. He was very calm and composed on the ball. I think this was last season or the season before. There was this sense of composure whenever he was on the pitch. He defended well. He was calm on the ball. He looked solid. He didn't look worried by anybody. Ever since his injury, he's come back and he has been one of the worst defenders we've seen. since. I think I said this in the Burnley match, but since Jilabaji, he has been one of the worst defenders we've seen. He's not reading situations well. He doesn't know when to challenge. Defensively, he's weak. He's completely unaware on crosses of what's behind him. There's so many gaps in his game. I do not understand why we are not playing Silva. There's no reason why Silva should not be out there. I don't give a crap what's going on behind the scenes. You want to win matches? You put out Silva. (laughs) You put him in defense. He's not going to make any stupid, dumbass mistakes. And yet here we are. <laughs> We're playing Body Shield for some reason. Like I, I want to know. I want to find out. I want somebody to ask Pochettino, why are you playing Body Shield over Tiago Silva at the moment? If you can explain that in a way that makes sense. Because if his explanation is, oh, we've just had some issues, personal issues off the pitch, then you, that makes no sense. Because who cares about personal issues? Who cares if, again, I've heard some people say, oh, his wife has caused issues. Who cares about that? You know, I, she she can post all the stupid stuff she wants. At the end of the day, you're here to win matches. You're here to, that is your job. Win matches, compete. If you're not putting your best defender on the pitch, you're not doing your job as a manager. You're not. It doesn't matter what your reasoning is. The only reason that's acceptable is that he's not fully fit. He's been back now for four or five matches. So his injury should not still be bothering him. He should be fit and well enough to play. And yet he's not. Matty Shield comes back, he's in that first game he's back from injury. Chalaba comes back, he's in as a sub that first game back from injury. You cannot tell me that Silva is not more fit than both of those guys. So why is he not out there? The only thing I can think of, again, is what people have been saying. Well, his wife has been causing issues. She's been posting stuff on social media. She's been calling out Pochettino and he's not liking it. Get, Get over yourself. Get over your damn self. You're not bigger than this club. You're a manager who's come in and you've done a piss poor job. 
do you have it rough? Do you have it difficult with all of these injuries, with all these hodgepodge players that Bully and his team have done a stupid job of bringing in? Absolutely. It would be difficult for any manager to come into this club. But you've come in and you've done below average based on what we have here. A good manager would keep us in the top half of the table at least. You've not been able to do that for us for a majority of this season. So I don't care who you are. I don't care who you've managed. Get over yourself and put your best defender on the freaking field. So anyways, yeah, Batty Shield was terrible today. Kukure on the left side. I mean, I've talked about him before, but he's got a lot of hard work in him, but God, he's stupid. <laughs> he is just one of the dumbest defenders I've ever seen. So easy to get past him because he completely flies into every challenge without any sense of closing down, defending, showing him to one side. He just goes flying in. I'm going to win the ball. And smart players are able to get around him because he, he's stupid <laughs> when it comes to football. Uh, in the midfield, I mean, Caicedo, if he starts next match, I Pochettino should probably be sacked on the spot, but we're, they're not going to do that. But to be fair, that's what should happen. Because there's no reason. I, If you've got Fernandez and Gallagher fully fit, if you've got both of them out there, there is no reason Caicedo should be on the pitch. I don't care if you want to push Gallagher further down the field. Doesn't matter. Fernandez, Gallagher. Until we get Lavia back in next season, you know, thanks physio team. Until we get, I don't know, who was the other one? Eh, Ugachuku was not good either. I think, I don't think we have any other midfielders now I'm thinking about it. But as long as Fer Fernandez and Gallagher are fit, that should be your two. That Fernandez is your distributor, Gallagher is your break up the play man. That's what it should be. There's no excuse. There's no reason. Nobody can give me a reason that Caicedo is still out there. You can't. I know Bowley probably could. Well, we paid a lot of money for him. So, that's your own damn fault. Again, you're here to win matches. You're here to put out your best team. Caicedo is not your best team. He's nowhere near your best team. So stop putting him on the field. End of story. It doesn't matter how much we paid for him. It doesn't matter how, how much his wages are. No, we don't want to waste money. Too bad. You already wasted money on him when you brought him in for how much you did. Honestly, when you brought him in, I could just say that because he's not good enough for Chelsea. He might be good enough for Brighton. He might be good enough for mid-table side because that's what we are now, a mid-table side. So if you're saying he's good enough for us, you're calling us a mid-table side. <laughs> and that's not where our ambitions are. But he should be nowhere near the starting eleven. Unless either Fernandez or Gallagher are not available, he should not be starting. If they are both available, they are holding mids. And then you put Palmer or Mudrick or whoever you want in the attacking mid role. That's the end of it. There's no discussion. There's no debate. There's no, oh, no, no, no. He's doing okay. He's not. He's done nothing effective for us. <laughs> I'm just, I'm sick of seeing him. Today just... It's one of those where when I get sick of a player, like when I was sick of Jorginho, it was like those games whenever he, for instance, the the back pass that nearly scored that Kepa had to keep out before it went in anyway. Uh, the moments whenever he'd give the ball away and they'd break on us and score it easily because he'd give it away basically as the second to last man. Those moments where Jorginho did something really stupid that would cost us a game, they just were amplified in my mind. For Caicedo, it's two times that because again Jorginho at least had the benefit of he would keep the ball moving for the most part would he give the ball away occasionally yeah he probably would but for the most part he kept the ball moving it was negative it was side to side but it was keeping that possession he wouldn't just hold on to it I knew not to trust him defensively because that's not what he was out there for for Caicedo he's out there to be defensive he's out there to be that break up the play, man. He's out there to do all of that stuff. Not only does he not do that, he gives the ball away so often. And now he's going to go assist the goal that's going to bring Man U back into this game? It, you're an idiot. And you should never touch the ball again in a Chelsea jersey. Get out of this club. <laughs> I'm sick of him. Fernandez, he was okay. 
for the most part. He wasn't phenomenal. He definitely had moments where it felt like he was a little slow to to catch up to people. To I guess the de- the defensive side of his game, he was a little slow today. wasn't terrible. He wasn't the worst player on the pitch, but he was not at the level that I've seen him play before. So I don't know why that is. Maybe just still a little bit of jet lag, still kind of recovering from playing international break and then coming back, not having much time to recover. I don't know. He just, he's not, he's one of those players that has set a pretty high standard for himself after some of the matches I've seen this season. So whenever he's below that standard, he could still be better than half the players on the pitch. But if he's not playing up to his standard, then I judge him a little bit more harshly. And today, like I said, defensively, he didn't look as good in his passes or not great. Some good ones, but not the level of passing I've seen from him. On the right side, Palmer, I mean, like I said, he he's the one good thing that Boley's done for this club. Good, solid player. Hat trick today to, to save the game for us. I don't really have much to say outside of thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, he's he's shown that composure, the quality that we need in uh, an attacking player. I still think he'd be better going down the center, but you know, coming in from the right side, being able to cut in and have a shot with his left foot, it's starting to work a little bit more. I, I know that was one of the things that whenever I talk about it to like my dad and I'd say, I think he's better in the middle. That was his argument was, no, he's better coming in on his left and having a shot. But the problem is, is he wasn't very effective with that. Most of his shots were right at the keeper or they were a little weak, a little tame. But more recently, it started to work. It started to work a bit better. He scored the one against, I think it was Villa, maybe? Maybe Leicester. I don't remember. It, it was pretty recent, though. In the past couple of months, there's one he cuts inside and then shoots kind of near post and catches everybody off guard. And then obviously the goal to win the game was him cutting in on the left and having a shot. Lucky with the deflection, but still. I mean, it was a good shot, it was powerful, and it was a dangerous shot. So I'm starting to see a little bit more how that can be effective. It was just at the time, whenever I made those comments about seeing him more as a 10, I really felt like that was his best position because he was able to get into that middle area and make things happen, knock it around. Now, I'm I'm seeing why him being on the right side, getting him the ball out there, he's got time and space to make something happen. And again, he can c- cut in on his left. And now you got to f- figure out, do you want to show him down the line? But that gives him some more space to run into or you let him cut inside and have the danger of maybe he has a good shot. So in the middle Gallagher, uh, obviously good, good to see him score today, but I think the biggest thing for him. And I think once again, why so many people tend to want him to stay at the club is he has so much work in his bones. He has the ability to just run and run and run and track players down go into hard challenges. He's not scared to challenge people. I I think if you get rid of him, you lose your engine in the midfield. And we don't have an engine past him. You know, Fernandez, he's not an engine. That's not his game. Caicedo, if he's an engine, I would say he's probably like one of those little tiny motor engines that you would put in like a little like Hot Wheels car that you wind up. That's the engine that Caicedo has. Gallagher, I mean, he just constantly running. I don't think I ever see him going at 50 to 70%. It's almost always 90 to hundred percent every single game. He's just working, working, working. So he's not always had the, uh, the, he's not always had the end product. I think that's the one thing that people sometimes will say he lacks that we need more from, and I do agree. We do need a little bit more from him in that sense. But I think you need his work rate so much. You need him to produce the defensive side of the game so much. You can't not play him. You can't sell him. You know, oh, it's good business. It's going to keep us. <laughs> Again, sell those idiots that you brought in for way too much money, like Kukurea, like Caicedo, like Badi you know, Actually, Badi Ashil might have been before Bowley. But anyways. Sell those guys. Get rid of them. We don't need those guys. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, Gallagher, not the best player. I think Palmer easily takes that. But 
definitely a very useful player that we needed today, and I feel like he showed up for us. On the left side, Mudrik, kind of another one of those eh, games from him, and I, I think that's kind of what I've come to expect out of him. You know, he, he works hard. He has a lot of energy going up and down that line, trying to get in behind defenders, but he'll have one game where he looks effective and all of a sudden everybody's raving about what a fantastic player he'll score a goal and like, ah, now he's going to get goals every single game. And then he won't do anything. He won't assist. He won't score nothing for the next five or six games. And we're still, I think it's like game three since he scored. He hasn't given us much since the goal. So I, I really just think people need to temper their expectations for him. He is not the superstar that I think everybody was thinking he was going to be after that little cameo in the first game he played against Liverpool. He has the energy and the pace to be a deadly counterattacking player. So in the games, whenever we're ahead, that's when he's going to look most effective. And in the moments, you know, before Man U scored the first goal, I did think those were probably his most effective, most dangerous moments in this match. But his finishing, his ability in the final third still lacks a little bit. And especially whenever the other team is packing it in, you almost never see him look that effective. He'll be on the ball a lot, but if you watch what he actually does with it, half the time it's either a deflected shot or it's just a straight up giveaway. So I can't really say that I want to see a ton more out of him. I, I don't mind seeing him, but I think he needs to be more utilized as coming on as a sub after we're already a goal or two up and then he can be dangerous on the counterattack as the other team pushes out a little bit more. As far as Jackson up top, honestly, it's hard to say cuz I don't I don't really remember him being that involved. He did have a couple of passes that I felt like were maybe a little too easy to defend against, you know, there there are just moments where he's in a good position, he gets on the ball and the defender does well. You know, closes him down, makes it difficult for him. But I feel like I've I've seen enough from him to know he has the ability to be dangerous in those one on one situations. And there are moments when it feels like he doesn't really want to try to work hard. You know, he doesn't want to try. Let me try to take on this defender. Instead, it's like eh, it's too hard. Let me just kick it. And if he blocks it, he blocks it. If not, maybe it'll go through. I, I don't know. That's that's what his body language looks like, though. It, that's that's what I see in those moments because it could be as simple as let me cut it back you know let me cut and then cut again now he's he's got to decide does he go does he stay does he step in they're just those moments he tends to not look like he wants to really fight against the defender and it's not all the time sometimes he does look like he's up for for a fight he does look like he wants to challenge the defender and bully him off the ball but it's not enough, you know, for what we need up top, for the type of striker we need up there. It's not enough from him. It's every now and then. And in those moments, he does look good and he has started to, to come along as the season's progressed. But today was one of those games where we needed him to be at his best almost the entire match. And we got his best maybe like 10% of the time. And that just was not enough. And especially whenever Man U were starting to get their groove and were starting to actually get their confidence up, he really disappeared in those times. So we're looking to try to get out. We're looking to try to break on him as they're stepping up. And he's just nowhere to be found because it, it got difficult for him and it felt like he just didn't want to work himself out of that difficult moment. So as far as the subs that came on, uh, the first two... I mean, first of all, way too late for the subs anyway, because it was after the third goal. But I think, all right, I just had to look it up. It was Chukwameka on for Caicedo, which I thought was actually a good move. Because, uh, I mean, like I said, Caicedo not giving you anything. He's hurting you more than he's helping you. So Chukwameka coming on, it pushes Gallagher back to be the more defensive side of things. Chukwameka, I do think he's got that little bit of quality that can help us in the final third. He just needs to get some more game time under him because he's not played. and quite a while so i would like to see more of him but obviously i know he keeps getting injured so you don't want to force him and break him again and then uh the same time sterling came on for mudrick and that was just if sterling shows up to play if he gives us 100 percent, then yeah fantastic you know he's he's a great player 
We so rarely get that Sterling these days, though. So unfortunately, in this match, it was not the same Sterling that we we needed <laughs> in the past. And for Chukwameka, you know, I thought he was okay. You know, he had a couple of dangerous moments and definitely moments where his hard work helped us in the final few moments of the match. But uh, yeah, not, still not the level I think that we want to see. The the level that we need from him that he showed a couple of times before he got injured the last time. So the next subs were Disasi off and Chalaba in and then Gusto off, Gilchrist in. Uh, Disasi I thought was you know no reason for him to come off at that point. Again, I really feel like Betty Shield was a lot more deserving to get subbed off based on the performance today. But Jalaba came on and I mean it was okay. It was fine from him. I think he he did a decent enough job in that defensive role and he's been a decent player for most of this season. He's not been great. Definitely not the same levels that we saw whenever he first stepped onto the, the scene. But he looked okay today and he definitely helped us in some moments later on in the match. And Gilchrist, I mean, he's just a hard worker, still young, still growing. And I think if he gets some more game time, there's a good chance he could be effective for us. But he still has that sort of raw nature about him where it feels like it's it's still very unrefined in his game and his defending. There are still moments where, kind of similar to Kukure in a way, where he's brave and he's going just flying into challenges. But there's not that sense of when to break down when to step off and when to go flying in so there are moments whenever he goes flying out there i can get that ball and then it just gets turned way too easily so i just i feel like the more he plays hopefully the more he'll learn when to go and when to stay as for the final sub uh maddie wake on for gallagher i mean it's it's a fine sub i just there's still that concern for me with maddie wake especially in matches where we need to get a goal we need to go score he has that X factor, that different feeling about him where he's willing to take on players. He's willing to, to try to be that, you know, I'm going to take on everybody and go score. But it can both help and hurt. You know, I talked about this with Ziek in the past where we look to keep so much possession. Ziek was the one guy on the pitch that when you gave it to him, he'd be willing to take a shot from anywhere. And sometimes it worked out. With Matty Wake, it's the same thing. Sometimes he's willing to be that extra, I'm going to go, I'm going to take this guy on and maybe get fouled, maybe have a shot, which can work. But in the moments where it doesn't work, in the moments where he gives the ball away too cheaply or there's a better option, he could have passed and laid it off to somebody who had a better chance. In those moments when he gives the ball away, it's even more frustrating because you just pass the ball. <laughs> So it's it's kind of a double-edged sword. You'll get those moments, like in this one, like in the, the Palace match when he won a penalty, like in the Leicester match when he went on a great run and scored. You'll get those moments every now and then, but for the most part, you're going to get frustrated with them because there are going to be so many times when there's a better option. Just pass the ball. Just lay it off. Just give it to this guy. He's wide open, but he wants to take it on himself. He wants the glory for himself, and then he goes and gives the ball away, and now we're still losing. So it's... Very up in the air whether or not I like him or I hate him. <laughs> and today, I had just so happened to like him. So, I, I still think there are better options out there. I still wouldn't say that he is somebody that I would trust in and that I want to see this club keep on and keep using. But he is a bit different. And I do think keeping somebody like that on the team for that different moment and for that maybe he'll turn up with a great performance, I, I, can, I can see the logic behind that. Me personally, I would just prefer somebody that's a lot more consistent, somebody that's a lot more team based, you know, a, a more team player. But that's just me. But yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. And like I said, it's a win. It was not a pretty win, but it's one that it has a good feeling because of that last minute, last second goal to win it. But I don't want to feel like this every match. I don't want every match to be this scary, this embarrassing at times to watch i mean the defending was piss poor at times it i don't want if we're going to win matches that are exciting and intense i don't want it to be we were good and then we were terrible and that nearly cost us the game but then we turned it on right there at the end to win it i don't want that to be how we win it if it's going to be a close match let it be oh, i was fighting back and forth back and forth both teams were playing well but then we won in the last second because of that one moment of quality that we managed to find 
that's a lot more of the excitement I'm looking for, personally. But with all that being said, though, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on the game today? What were your thoughts on players, manager, trash owner? Let me know. We can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Chelsea reviews. I hope you guys have a great day. And until next time, I'll talk to you all later. Peace out.